Hey everyone, this is Sidi and today I'm going to show you how to quickly set up your own Quake Live mapping environment as a lot of people had problems with it in one way or another. So first of all, grab all the files you need from the post, which would be GTK Radiant version 1.6.3 as well as the latest version of Wolfcam. A few people have been asking me why I am using Wolfcam for Quake Live mapping. The advantage is ha it has is that it can read the encrypted Quake Live archive files, so you can easily test your maps without having to make a PK3 file every time and uh, set it to read only and put it into the Quake Live folder. So you can simply launch your map through Wolfcam. All right, so once you got the files. Copy them to a central Quake Live mapping folder. I've simply called my folder QL Mapping, and inside the folder you can see there is the Radiant folder as well as the Wolfcam folder. So, what we are going to do now is set up Wolfcam, which is nothing more than copying the archive files from your Quake Live directory to your Wolfcam base Quake 3 directory. If you cannot find your Quake Live folder, um, there is a link in the post which explains how to find it on almost every operating system. <coughs> so yeah, you should definitely check that out if you can't find it. However, check all, the, uh, select all your archive files, copy them and paste them into your Wolfcam base Quake 3 folder. And that's it already for setting up Wolfcam. So now we are going to launch the editor. editor. And what it's going to do, it's going to ask you what game you, you want to work with. So obviously we are going to select Quick Life and for the engine directory we are going to bring up the file browser and navigate to our Wolfcam directory. Note that it's important you select the root Wolfcam directory and not the base Quake 3 directory containing the archive files. Uh, a lot of people usually um, mix that up and it causes a lot of problems. So yeah, click OK and click OK once again. Now it's going to ask you about a few settings. I suggest you check the first one, auto load selected game on startup so you don't have to do this setup every time you launch the editor and click OK. Now the editor is going to launch and what you want to do now before getting started with mapping is change a couple preferences so click on edit in the menu bar and go to the preferences menu navigate to layout in the interface menu and select the third one with the camera view, the top view, the front view and the side view and yeah, check it and click OK. Personally I think that this layout is the best one especially for beginners as it's easier to keep an overview that way and you don't have to learn the shortcut to change the viewports and you know it's just easier for beginners. So, to make the layout change effective, we are going to have to relaunch Radiant. And yeah, there is this box. There is this bug some people get where if you set preferences for the first time, Radiant won't save them and just reset the settings to default. So you're going, maybe you're going to have to do the layout change again and restart Radiant another time. Alright, now it worked. So one more thing you want to change and that's the color scheme of the viewports. As you can see the current default scheme is very contrasting and not so easy on the eyes. Also it's hard to differentiate what's the outline of a brush and what's part of the grid. So what you want to do is go to MISC in the menu bar, select colors, themes and choose Maya Max Lightwave Emulation. As you can see this 
scheme is a lot less contrasting and makes it easier to see what's the outline of the brush and what's the grid. This is very important, especially if you get further into mapping and your maps get more complex so you can keep an overview and don't map things up. Alright, that's it so far for setting up Radiant. I hope um, it helped. If you got questions, just reply to the post and I will try to answer as soon as possible. In the next video, I'm going to explain how to make your own first room and how to connect two rooms with the doorway. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.